18650 cell drill upgrade? Well, this whole story began a couple of days ago when I had a bad need for a drill. I did not have a drill at home, so I had gone to a friend of mine to get one. Unfortunately, my friend told me that his drill hadn't been operational. The battery in it was gone. He told me that I could have taken it as he was to bin it anyways. I decided to get the drill up and run it again. I had to analyze the drill battery and the drill charger with my old multimeter, but the 9V battery in it was totally flat. It was Easter night, so getting a replacement would mean me driving 20 km or more. As I wanted to start the project immediately, I charged my 9V multimeter battery with my small 12V lead acid battery, so I could finally start my cell replacement project. Having the 9V battery charged, the project began. I measured the voltage provided by the drill battery charger and the battery itself. I got 22.5 volts from the charger and 13.6 volts from the 12 volt drill battery. The next step was to have a closer look on the drill battery, powered by nickel cadmium cells. Welcome in Max DIY. Subscribe and turn the notifications on to get more DIY videos. The battery housing contained 10 cells rated at 1.2 volts and 1000 mAh each. I took them out just a couple of screws. Well, it does not look complicated it does it. Only sells no controllers. How hard can it be? Straight away I noticed that some of the cells did have a leak. Technically speaking, replacing the broken cells would do the job, but I wanted to have a 18650s inside. I wanted to have a slightly higher voltage as well. Hopefully electric motor will survive a bit more power. When I had dumped two laptops a couple of years ago, I decided to take the fully operational battery packs and store them for later use. To get the 18650s from the battery packs, I had to get through plastic casings and it was not easy. It is actually me getting 18650s out first time in my life. It took me a good 30, maybe 45 minutes to take the cells out of the plastic casings. I decided to be in the battery controllers as I had no idea how to use them in my project, but the temperature control would be handy. The wide battery pack was much better quality than the second one I opened. I got the reading from the 18650s and I got 14.8 volts, that is the exact voltage the battery pack was designed to provide, and it is a good couple years after charging it for the last time. Really impressive. The second battery pack was a bit larger, containing two more 18650s, so I had 10 18650s in total that would give me 37 volts. But that really is designed for 12 and I do not want to destroy it. Well at this time. I decided to desolder each and every cell from the controllers and themselves. Some of the cells were connected by metal connectors spot welded to the cells so I had to remove them by force. I wanted to have all the cells separated so I could measure the voltage on each and every cell. And here are the effects. The orange cells from the better battery pack provide around 3.7 volts each, for the blue ones much less. The question is are they dead or simply discharged? To find out I decided to charge them and check which cells will keep the voltage without the discharging. We'll talk about that later. Having the 18650s carefully aligned inside of the housing, I decided to use 8 cells in total in 4 2 cell packs, giving me 14.8 volts at 2500 mAh. Well, that's it for today. Remember to turn the notifications on shortly after subscribing to my channel so you can see the second episode of me getting the drill back and running and then taking over the galaxy.